Today we have electroluminescent paint and Lumilor on deck. It is the only paint product that illuminates light electrified. Today we are describing what is Lumilor. Lumilor is electroluminescent paint and we've been getting a lot more questions lately on what is entailed in doing electroluminescent paint. The big thing is that some people think that they want a logo that lights up on their car and they think it's either glow in the dark or that it's easy to do, one of the two things. And the number one uh, getaway that I want to get out of this video is describe what is involved in lighting say a logo or a design. This particular project is a Banshee quad and we have already done the Lumilor process to this panel along with a few others that we're going to show you guys. But the one uh, main deal is you cannot just light or paint this product on and it just gives off light. It's not like glow-in-the-dark paint. You in a sense are creating a circuit board on the substrate that you're going to paint First, this has to be at the very bottom. So we're talking about after body work is done and or having a new panel, like this is all plastic. But the things that come into play is what does Lumilor cost? And the big issue is every single job is completely different. There is a very complex way you go about every single panel and how they are done. Um, Everything from the curves that you have to go around, the coverage, how many panels. If you want a seamless design that goes over multiple panels, you're talking about multiple wires. And yes, this paint is actually wired to an inverter. And from that inverter, it gets its power from either a wall source, 110 volt, or your 12 volt battery in your car. How it works is you have five different coatings that go down on this panel and when you are done you are masking out every one of those five layers of Lumilor. Lumilor is the brand of the paint and when you are done you light it with an actual power source to give off light. It is a phosphor coating that gets excited and when you do it right it gives off that light. But you cannot just paint Lumilor in the center of a panel and light that logo only. What you need to know is that there needs to be a certain thought that goes into the surface area. Your inverter size matters on how much area you can light. You are limited to approximately 144 square inches with a small inverter and 244 square inches with a large inverter. If you need a bigger surface, we have to stack circuits and it, it involves a lot. It involves a lot of prep, a lot of masking. You actually paint this, as I was saying before, first. So when body work is done, whether the car be in primer and sealed, you can't have any metal or anything conductive exposed. And then when you do the process, you'll notice this uh, perimeter is the bus bar. You have to back mask the area that you're lighting. So in this case, the center of this panel is going to light up and we have this bus bar. The bus bar is where you come in with the color of the car and you completely cover that back up. And that's really where it gets convoluted is depending on the design, I'm trying to explain to people that if you wanted, let's just say you wanted it to say Banshee in the center of this. In order to spray that logo, we have to do the circuit, lay it out, do the entire process of prepping the entire panel from edge to edge. Now, if that's a car door, quarter panel, whatever it may be, we have to scuff and prep that entire panel. Not just, even if it's only this big, the entire panel gets prepped. We do the circuit, we light the area that we want to do, and then we designed 
whatever logo that's going to go back over that area and back mask it. Then you take the color of the car that's going to surround the logo and you paint the entire area around it and blend out a color if it's an existing paint job or you paint the whole thing to leave you with only the area of light exposed. And that's the biggest thing is people think you can just paint this on there and that logo is going to light only. It does not work that way. And then you have to clear coat the entire panel in, not once, but twice. You have to seal up the Lumilor from any conductivity giving electrical shocks. And then you have to sand that, do your artwork, your color matching, and that sort of thing to be able to come back in and clear coat the entire panel or side of the car that it needs. So it's not just doing the logo, it's doing the entire panel that you want the logo on. So that is a big factor in the price. Lumilor is not the cheapest paint. I mean, they range anywhere from $4.80 a square inch just for the product that you're gonna put on, not including the labor and every shop is a little bit different on what it costs hourly to apply it. So um, there is electrical um, procedures that we're gonna take with a voltmeter and we're gonna show you guys how you test to make sure you don't have a short directly. I'm kind of jumping the gun towards the end of this. This isn't really a tutorial on how to do Lumilor. It's just what is involved in the risks of doing Lumilor. So with that, we're gonna show you the other part and the circuit how it works. So this is the rear of the fenders for the Banshee and we're lighting each top of the fender before we do all of our artwork. And then we have the back section of the fenders as well that's going to light. This is gonna be a memorial bike, so we're doing several different graphics on this. Um, but you'll notice I have a voltmeter. Not every paint job requires a voltmeter where you're actually gonna be checking ohms resistance on the panel. The copper color that you're seeing is the back plane. It is one of the products that you use two times in this, uh, we'll call it a circuit board that we're creating. And you have to make sure throughout this process that you do not have an electrical short between the first coating and the fourth coating. Because when you come back with the conductive top coat that actually connects this whole circuit together and gives off light, you wanna make sure you test it. So the reason that I'm bringing these things up is your design layout of what it is that you want to add Lumilor to your project, it could severely affect the price because of the curvature of the panel and the pa how many panels you want to connect. Every bit of this is a circuit that we have to test and make sure that there is nothing bleeding through from the first coating, which is the center here. You can see our wire leads that come in. This is conductive. You can hear the voltmeter checking ohms and you wanna make sure that you have isolation from your first coating to the last. When you spray this and you do the top coat, if you have any areas that have bled through that are crucial, it will actually burn the substrate and you actually have to strip this all the way back off and start over from square one. And at $4.80 a square inch, that is not an uh, uh, affordable substrate to you wanna be doing. So be very thoughtful on what your design is. Less is more with Lumilor because you're limited to the surface area that you can do. So if you're limited to 244 square inches is what optimal is. We have done bigger circuits that do light, but there is a uh, price to pay when if something is overloaded or it doesn't work and you've wasted all that material. So we're gonna move forward and we're actually gonna mask off our leads so we don't have a short in this area because all we care about is the fender area lighting and the other areas that we've already masked out. So we're gonna show you guys this paint lighting up and that's the best part of this whole project. So these are just some of the things that I want people to understand what goes into this paint job. When we talk about thinking about your design layout, every bit of a pocket also matters when the paint goes on, when you're doing the dielectric, the dielectric is your insulated layer and your Lumicolor if you don't have those completely even, you get a different effect. And if it's too thick, you'll have areas that are darker. 
These are some of the common problems that people have with Lumilor, and I want you to be mindful when you're picking your project where you want this light to go, because it does have an effect on it. If you guys come in here and look at this panel, right now everything from this edge we're going to light. And because of these pockets, if you think about this from a spray gun technique, coming in and you're spraying this, the only way you can have it look completely uniform is if you have this gun spraying everything to the exact same mill thickness all the way through. And I already know by looking at this, you have a little bit of a yellowy tinge where the dielectric and the lumicolor are thicker. Where the dielectric is thicker, it makes it darker. And where the lumicolor is yellowy, you have too much. It's not an even coating. And that's what makes Lumilor look off. For this particular project, we're going to be putting lace and graphics over this. And by the time we finish our airbrushing, none of that's going to matter. But these are some of the challenges that you have. And when we go and light this next with the conductive top coat, we're shooting this at a very high PSI. We're at like 60 PSI with a wide fan and the needle is choked almost to nothing coming out. All of those things will show what it's going to look like. Right now in lighted area, when you look at the panel, it may look splotchy when we get done with this if you do not have it, even the conductive top coat put on. So there's other ways to offset that and deal with it, but all of these things are things you need to think about when picking your design we have come to find with Lumilor is that when you're doing the conductive top coat, again, we talk about choking the needle, meaning there's hardly any material coming out, having a wide fan so you don't have splotchiness with this coating, and a higher air pressure to itemize. The bigger the air pressure, the smaller the droplet, and the more fine of a mist you get. It does not take much. What we're going to do is we're going to show you a different way. Instead of lighting it in the dark, we're going to put the conductive top coat on very thin and very even in the light so we can see what it looks like. When you're in the dark, it does not show. You might have a really good lit surface, but when you turn the lights on, you have things that look tiger stripes. So if you come in and actually put the conductive top coat on now, while you can see, then come back and heat it and turn the lights off, you'll see what areas you need to just dust in to get it to light. Um, you'll notice we're using a blow dryer, you can use a heat gun. As that material dries, it will give off the light. And it's not this that's giving off the light, it's the electrical circuit. But you have to dry this material. All the materials that we use out of the four products used, one of them you used twice, the only one that's water-based is the conductive top coat. All the rest of them are solvent-based. So just things to think about. If you've sprayed solvent paint versus waterborne, you notice how different it sprays. So we've already set up our gun, and we're just gonna go through and put a real light coat. I do not have power on. You don't really need it on. I want you to come in and look. You see one little tiny pass, look how splotchy it looks. That's what you do not want. So we want to choke the gun even more. So I'm gonna choke it all the way till we have no paint coming out of the gun. We want it. Barely anything. You can see how I just dust it. Hardly any material comes out. You can use a, I actually need to use a different gun. This is a 1.4 tip. It's awful big for what we're doing. We should be using a 1.3 tip or a 1.2 because it's like painting water. But that tiny little bit, like I said, this isn't really that crucial for this project because we're gonna be putting lace and graphics over it. With this, we're going to 
dry that material. You can see some of the splotchiness goes away, but if your logo has a very big area where you want raw lumilor, and you're going to see it during the night, what you're going to find is that the splotchiness doesn't really show up with the lighted in the dark. When it shows up is in the daytime with the lights on. So you can take a transparent white and dust over this with a, um, I forget the name of House of Color makes it, it's a transparent white, and it will make this look more uniform in the daytime. That way you don't have the splotchy look you're only losing a very, very small percentage of the lighted that comes through it. These are all little tiny tricks to make your paint job look uniform in the day and also look good at night. So with this, Carrie's gonna kill the lights. We're gonna turn the inverter on and we're gonna look and see how much of this lights. It's interesting. None of it lights. Why? You know what? I might have to go over the bus bar a little bit. Yep. So, again, I was in the day, in the light, putting the conductive top coat on, but notice I never ever went over this area of the bus bar. As soon as I get it over the bus bar and dry it, it's going to start lighting where we already coated. You have to treat this like an electrical circuit, not paint. Now we'll dry it and this thing will start giving off light. Boom, as soon as things start drying. Boom, look at that. Ooh, and we got some shorts too. So you can see how finicky this paint can be. Any little area, for example, if you come in here and look at this hole, Every now and then there's a spark that comes out of that hole. We're going to come back in and insulate the hole. And you'll also notice on this side here, or even here, there's a little spot where it's not lighting. That's because no conductive top coat has gotten there. And that's where you come in now. Agitate the gun always. And boom, they disappear. See that? It only takes that tiny little bit, and then you got to dry it. The number one thing that people do when they first start using Lumilor is they see these areas that look dark, and they add more conductive top coat. If you add more conductive top coat to that, you're not going to get that to light any brighter. The reason that is dark is because you put on your dielectric and your Lumicolor too heavy. And what you're doing is you're actually shooting yourself in the foot because if you add more conductive top coat right now to this panel, it's going to become splotchy with the lights on. And that's something that you need to be very mindful of with doing this product. It is not the conductive top coat that needs to be put on heavier. It is controlling your coats all the way through dielectric and Lumicolor. So that is Lumilor. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit us up if you guys have any kind of questions on it. You guys want an estimate, a full breakdown. Every product or every project is completely different. So feel free to 
shoot us a DM for your project. Till then, stay tuned for part two of this project where we do all the artwork and how we're gonna give it a three-dimensional look all the way through this paint job. You guys have a good one, see you next time.